who had twins and the backyard had just overgrown and they couldn't use it to play in anymore. They, they heard about this family whose daughter had leukemia and while they were away getting treatment in, in I think in Minnesota, uh, the basement flooded and, and they wouldn't be able to bring their daughter home because there'd be too much mold in the house. So this small group, missional community, goes over and cleans it out. And they were all good uh, projects and people would ask them, why are you doing this? Like, what are you doing? And they would announce the kingdom of God. And they would talk about who Jesus was and, and what he'd done in their lives. And at one point, there's a reporter from the Sun News who had come to, to see this basement situation. And she said, why are you here? And they tell him, well, we f- feel like this is what Christ has called us to do. And she looked at him and said, she looked at Chris right here and she said, are, are you people for real? And she couldn't believe that this is what we, we felt we were called to do. And this was good. All these things were good. But, but they, and, and they were being the church where life intersection happened, but they still hadn't really found a person of peace. No home for them to really move into. Finally, they made contact with a community organizer that worked with, with the local school board. And she basically signed them up to volunteer for a math night at one of the local elementary schools. So that night, about five of them go, go to this math night. And essentially, it was basically a time for parents and kids to learn together. So these five volunteers go in, and before the, the, the night uh, starts, one of the teachers says, so why are you here? Because right, there's all sorts of volunteers, teachers, friends, family, but nobody who doesn't have any connection to the school. So why are you five here? Well, we, we care about families, and we want to help. Okay, okay, but why are you here? Well, we feel like this is part of what we're made to do and what God has called us to do. Right, right, okay, but why are you here? And this one guy, he says this. He says, at our church, we think if we want to train a kid up, we've got to partner with a family and help them learn together. And we see that that's what you think about math, too. If a kid's going to learn in math, the, the family's got to be involved. And so we want to help you do that, and we want to learn from what you're doing. And the teacher just kind of got it. She understood. Right there, that night, they announced peace to the house. Right? They were received by the people of peace. They were already active in the community before we ever got there. The next week, the missional community leader has an opportunity to meet with two women who work full-time for the schools, one in the preschool, one in the elementary school. They have lunch together. And they said, okay, so what does your group really want to help us with? He says, this is what we want to do. We want to be the hands and feet. We want to be the manpower for projects that you've always wanted to do but never thought was possible. She's like, what kind of agenda are you bringing in? We want to be the hands and feet. We just want to do what you want us to do. I'm like, okay, so we have this project. We need to pack 500 book bags and get materials out to these families. We've wanted to do this for years, and, and we've never been able to. Well, the guy says, we can do that. He thinks, oh, man, how are we going to pay for that, right? We don't know how we're going to pay for it. They're like, we have all the equipment. When, when can we do it? So next Tuesday, the missional community is going and packing these things up, 500 bags. So they said, well, that would be great. And he's like, that's not all we want to do. We want to do this forever with you. We want to move in and be a part of this with you. And they're like, well, what other things could you do? So he says, well, I heard about a school who has a program for dads. Every month they bring dads and kids together, and they teach dads how to be dads, how to care for their kids, how to have fun with their kids. These people are like, we've never heard of that program. It's like right down the road, right? He's like, I've been researching. I care about families. They said, well, let's do that. Let's figure that out. So the conversation goes on, and clearly they, they realize that they're going to partner together. And the lady says, do you have other groups at your church that do things like this? He's like, oh yeah, we have groups like this. Then there are more starting all the time. She says, if this works here, if this works at our house, we'll get you into every school in the district. Here's the thing. In that preschool and elementary school, that missional community is going to intersect with more families than we could ever get to come to a Sunday morning service. If it works, and it's going to work, we'll be invited to make our home in other schools and and to to serve the community there. And as that happens, I truly believe we'll be invited other places. Seen a few brief encounters, really just two. We've we've had the kingdom announced in our community. The teacher from Math Night, those two women there in that restaurant, they understood not that we just want to help, but that we want to help because Jesus is sending us as, as basically servants to the community. They've invited us in. This missional community in that school, they share a common vision, right? They, they care about families together. They want to see society transformed at that school, and, and we do too. And we just believe we know the one who can transform that community. And we know the one who can save a soul, who can forgive sins. We, we've been sent by the one who renews communities. See, if we're going to reach the 60%, we're going to have to be the church where they live, work, and play. 
That means we're going to have to spend more time out there than in a church building or planning another worship service. And don't get me wrong, I think that Jesus cares deeply about building the church. In fact, he promised that that's what he was going to do. But that's the job he's given to himself. The job he's given to us is to go, right? To make disciples of all nations, wherever they are. It's not setting up churches and hoping they come to us. It's going, it's being the church in the community where life intersection happens. And that's why I love Neo360. Now, I don't know if you know this, but there are multiple organizations all over our country and even in our community that, that exist to help start good churches. And I didn't want to partner with them because I wasn't really that concerned with starting a good church. And Neo360 was about what I was about. They're about transforming a city. They're about kingdom collaboration. Neo360 is about training leaders to be catalysts in a community. Neo360 wants to rally the whole church, every single member, every believer, to engage in every domain of society. See, when you support Neo360, you're not giving money to start new churches, although new churches will start. You're funding a missionary movement that is dead set on reaching those who would never darken the door of a church. In this room, I believe that there is everything necessary. There is everything necessary to reach the 60% who would never go to church in Northeast Ohio. In this room, there is everything necessary needed to plant the gospel in the lives of those who would never go to church. In this room is everything that is required to see that 60% in your neighborhood shrink. In this room are the resources, the networks, the leaders that God has called to see that 60% encounter the kingdom of God, give their lives to Jesus, and join us on the mission of going into all the world. The question, though, is what are we going to be about? What are you going to be about? I mean, are you going to be about the 40% or are you going to be about the 60%? Are you going to uh, build it hoping that they'll come to you and condemning anyone who wouldn't come into church? Or are you going to go be the church where life intersection happens? I mean, maybe God is calling you to plant this kind of church where you live. Maybe God's calling you to leverage your talents to, to see the movement happen amongst the 60% in your neighborhood. Maybe God's asking you to give to this movement. The question, though, is what are we going to be about? What are you going to be about? I just want to tell you why I love Neo360. See, Neo360 isn't really a church planting organization or network. It's really a platform for kingdom collaboration. It, it provides a space where Southern Baptists and United Brethren and Lutheran and Covenant church people can come together. We're, we're urban and suburban, rich and poor, young and old can come together. It provides the opportunity for all of us to work together to see the gospel transformation take place in our city. And it's not just that, though. I love Neo360 because they believe that that can happen. And they're giving their lives to it. Let's pray. God, we give you thanks that you are active, that you know the 60% and you know the 40%. You know that there are those who would never darken the door of a church, and you know that there are those of us who spend way too much time in church. And God, we know that your heart goes out for all of us and that you have a purpose for all of us and that you want, want to see life happen in all of, their, all of those lives, and you're sending us to make a difference. And God, I pray for this time together as we hear some stories of life transformation in a community, as we see the church going and being the church where other people live, work, and play. God, I pray that you would inspire our hearts and you would direct us towards the things that you're calling us to. It's in your name we pray. Amen.